Hello, LearnSTEM. This episode is going to be our muscles to know. So we're going to go through the human body, and I'll show you the locations, the origins, insertions, and the actions of all of our muscles to know. Starting off, we're going to um, do the muscles of the human head. And the first one is going to be your epicranus frontal belly. And the origin is going to be your epicranial aponeurosis, which is on the top of the head. And the insertion is the skin of the eyebrows. So this action is going to be raising the eyebrows. Next is our orbicularis oculi, which is the ring of muscles right around your eye right here. The origin is going to be your frontal and maxillary bones. So right here and right here inserts into the tissue of the eyelid, as you can see. And this action is going to be closing your eye. Something similar is going to be your orbicularis oris, which is going to be the ring around your mouth, ring shape around your mouth. Um, and this one, it's similar. So the origins are going, the origin is going to be the muscles around your mouth and it inserts into the corners of your mouth right here. And just like your orbicularis oculi, the function is to close your mouth. Next, we have our masseter, which is the strongest muscle of the body right here. <laughs> and um, this has an origin of the zygomatic arch and your maxilla. And the insertion is from the angle in the ramus of the mandible, and it closes your jaw. Similarly is your temporalis. That's going to be your temporalis. And you can't really sit too well right now, but the origin is your temporal fossa and your insertion is your coronoid process of your mandible. This also has the function of closing your jaw and also retracting your mandible. So if you can imagine that, it's like moving your jaw kind of backwards. Um, next, we have our muscles of the neck and we only have one muscle here one muscle to know, and that is going to be your sternocleidomastoid. And I love this one because it's very self-explanatory. It's going to be this muscle right here. If we fade the others, this is what it looks like. So there's two parts. This is your sternal head, and this is your clavicular head of your sternocleidomastoid. As you can probably tell, the origin is going to be your manubrium of your sternum and your medial clavicle right here. And the insertion is the mastoid process of your temporal bone. So uh, that's where sternocleidomastoid comes from. And what this function is, it's going to be neck flexion. And it rotates your head towards your shoulder opposite side. Now we're going to go to our anterior muscles of the thorax, shoulder, and abdominal wall. Uh, we're going to start with your pectoralis major, which is this muscle right here. And this has an origin um, of your clavicle, your sternum, and the cartilage of your first six ribs. It's going to be on this side. And then the insertion is into your intubercular sulcus of your humerus. Right there. What the pectoralis major does is it flexes and adducts your shoulder. And if you remember, adduct is kind of coming towards your body while abduct is going away from your body. And it also medially rotates your humerus, which makes sense because the insertion is um, on your humerus. Next, we have our serratus anterior, which you can see on this side. And um, the origin is the lateral aspect of your first eight ribs. The insertion is the vertebral border of your anterior scapula. So it's going to go all the way behind your scapula. You can see it's kind of highlighted there. And what this does is it, um, it protracts and rotates your scapula. Next, we have your deltoid, which you might know that one already. It's kind of near your shoulder. And the origin is your lateral clavicle your acromion and the spine of your scapula. So this part here. And the insertion is the deltoid tuberosity of your humerus. So the deltoid muscle inserts in the deltoid tuberosity. What the deltoid does is it is responsible for shoulder abduction. Next, we have our pectoralis minor, and we're actually going to have to go behind the pectoralis major for this one. So this is your pectoralis minor, and you can see that the origin is third, fourth, and fifth ribs, and it inserts actually into the coracoid process of your scapula. 
And what um, the pectoralis minor does is it um, draws your scapula forward. Next, we have our external coastals. And how I like to think about this is um, it goes top down because what the external intercoastals are responsible for is elevating your rib cage during breathing. So external elevates. When you breathe in, your chest expands, and that's what your external intercoastals are responsible for because the origin is the inferior border of your rib above, and it inserts into the superior border of the rib below. And um, just a refresher, insertion always moves to origin. So while you're breathing in, your chest is expanding, then this lower portion is going to move to the upper portion of your ribs. From that, internal intercoastals, which is just the opposite, basically, of your external intercoastals, because your internal intercoastals, I like to think of bottom up. So this is your origin, and this is your insertion, and this is responsible for the depression of your rib cage during breathing out. So now we can move on to our rectus abdominis, and once we hide the rectus sheath, we can see our rectus abdominis right here, and the origin is going to be your um, pubic crest and symphysis, and it inserts into your xiphoid process and coastal cartilages of your fifth, sixth, and seventh ribs. It goes all the way down, and what this is responsible for is it flexes and rotates your vertebral column, and you'll find that action is really common for a lot of your anterior uh, muscles in this area, because now we have our external oblique, and that is on this side, and the origin is the anterior surface of your last eight ribs, and it inserts into the linea alba, the pubic crest and tubercles, and your iliac crest. And like the rectus abdominis, the external oblique um, also flexes and rotates your vertebral column, but it also compresses your abdomen. Next, we have our internal oblique, which is right here. It's lower, and it's below your ribs. The origin is your lumbar fascia, iliac crest, and inguinal ligament, and it inserts uh, like the external oblique into your lean alba, pubic crest, and coastal cartilages of your last three ribs. And this one also flexes and rotates your vertebral column, and it compresses your abdomen. And then we have our transverse abdominis right below the internal obliques. So your transverse abdominis is right here with the origin of your in guidal ligament, iliac crest, cartilage of your last six ribs, and your lumbar fascia. And the insertion is the linea alba and your pubic crest, and this also compresses your abdomen. The last muscle in this section is going to be your diaphragm. And this is going to be a little bit of an odd view because it's here. This is going to be your diaphragm. Your diaphragm separates your thoracic area from your ab abdominal pelvic area. And now moving on to the posterior muscles of the human trunk. So we're going to move our model back this way and we're going to start with our trapezius. And that is this muscle right here. It's actually all of these parts. And the origin is the occipital bone and then the spine of C7 and all thoracic vertebrae down here, and the insertion is the ac acromion and spine of your scapula and your lateral clavicle. So it goes all the way to the front right there. And what this does is it raises, rotates, retracts, and stabilizes your scapula. Next is the latissimus dorsi, which you might know as your lats. The origin is your spinous process of vertebrae and your last four ribs and iliac crest, and this inserts into your intubercular sulcus of your humerus. And what the latissimus dorsi does is it extends, abducts, and medially rotates the humerus. Next, we have our infraspinatus, infra, so below, and spine. So this is going to be our infraspinatus muscle. The origin is your infraspinatus fossa of your scapula, and it inserts into the greater tubercle of your humerus. And what this is going to do is laterally rotate the humerus. Same thing for your teres minor here. So the teres minor is from the origin lateral margin of the scapula, and it inserts also into the greater tubercle of the humerus. And like this is your teres minor, 
this would be your teres major because it's a little bit larger than the minor and the origin is the posterior inferior angle of the scapula and it also inserts into the intrabucular sulcus of the humerus what this is responsible for is it extends medially rotates and abducts your humerus Okay, so I have it highlighted here. This would be your subscapularis. Like I said, sub is below, and then scapularis would be your scapula. So it's going to be right there. It's highlighted in yellow. It originates on the subscapular fossa of the scapula, and it inserts into the lesser tubercle of the humerus. From the placement and also the muscle fibers, which goes for all the muscles here, you can also um, tell the action. And the, the action of the subscapularis muscle is it medially rotates the humerus. Now on the supraspinatus, that's um, going to be right here, supra being above, and then the spine spinatus of the uh, scapula. So the origin would be the supraspinatus fossa of the scapula, and it also inserts into the greater tubercle of your humerus. And this would abduct the humerus and also it stabilizes the shoulder. Now onto the rhomboid. There are two parts. It's rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. As you can tell, major is going to be the larger one. So this is your rhomboid major and this one is your rhomboid minor. Origins are similar between both of them. While the minor, it uh, originates on the spinous process of C7 and T1, which means cervical vertebrae 7 and thoracic vertebrae 1. The rhomboid major originates in T2 to T5 right here, and they both insert into the medial border of the scapula right here. And also both of them can retract and stabilize the scapula. Now we're moving on to the muscles of the humerus. We're going to start with triceps brachii. That's going to be here, still posterior on the um, model. And the origin is the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and also the medial and posterior humerus. And the action of the triceps brachii is elbow extension. Now moving on to the biceps brachii, that's on the opposite side. If I fade the others, you can tell that these two, the short and the long head, are what make up the biceps. And the origin of the biceps is the coracoid process of your scapula and the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula, and it inserts into your radial tuberosity. And what the biceps do is they help with elbow flexion and they supinate your forearm and uh, what supination is supination is rotating your forearm so that the palm can face um, up onto your brachioradialis and that is going to be this muscle right here it's a little bit lower than your biceps okay your brachioradialis originates in the lateral distal humerus and it inserts into the styloid process of your radius and what this does is elbow flexion um, another thing that helps with elbow flexion is your brachialis, which is right next to biceps, and this originates in the distal anterior humerus and inserts into your coronary process of your ulna. Now onto the muscles of the forearm, and we're going to start with the flexor carpi radialis. This originates in your medial epicondyle of your humerus, and it inserts into the base of your metacarpals two and three and what this does is it flexes your wrist and also abducts your hand and you can get that from the name flexor carpi radialis and since there's a flexor carpi radialis we also need to know flexor carpi ulnaris where the ulnaris originates is the medial epicondyle of your humerus and the olecranon of your ulna if I spin it around, you can see it a little bit better here. And then it inserts into the base of your metacarpal five and your hamate bones. This also flexes your wrist and abducts your hand. So like we have flexors, we also have extensor muscles. And those are going to be more lateral to the model. So starting with your extensor carpi radialis longus from the name, um, it's going to be pretty long. So, And if I fade the others, you can see that the origin is lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus, and it inserts into the base of metacarpal 2. 
and this extends and abducts your wrist. And similarly, we also have an extensor carpi ulnaris, which is completely posterior. You can see it right here. And the extensor carpi ulnaris, this one originates in your lateral epicondyle of your humerus and your posterior ulna, and it inserts into the base of your metacarpal number five. And this one also has the same um, action as your flexor carpi radialis longus, which is extending and adducting your wrist. Next, we have our muscles on the human thigh and leg. First, we're going to start off with the sartorius muscle, and that is this one right here. It's kind of in the shape of a J, and it goes across your entire thigh, and this originates in the anterior superior iliac spine up here, and it inserts into the medial aspect of your proximal tibia. And what this does is it flexes, abducts, and laterally rotates your hip and also flexes your knee. Next, we have our gracilis muscle, which is the most interior one right here. And what this does is it abducts your hip, flexes your knee, and medially rotates your femur. In this area of your leg, it's going to be responsible for adduction. Where the gracilis originates is the inferior ramus and the body of the pubis. And it inserts into the medial tibia inferior to the medial condyle, right down here. Now onto the four muscles that are um, very commonly referred to as your quads, your quadriceps. It's made up of four muscles. So first we're going to start with the rectus femoris, which is this large muscle right here. And it originates in the anterior iliac spine, superior acetabulum, right there. And it inserts into your tibial tuberosity and patella. Every um, every muscle in your quads, all the four of them, are all going to insert into your tibial tuberosity and your patella. So what your rectus femoris does specifically is knee extension and hip flexion. Now onto the second part of your quads is going to be the vastus lateralis. You can tell from the name lateralis, it's more lateral to the rest of the quadriceps. And it originates on the greater trochanter and the intertrochanteric line and linea aspera. It is also responsible for knee extension, but it also stabilizes your knee. Now, um, we're gonna move on to your vastus medialis, which is going to be medial to the quadricep muscles. And this one originates in your linea aspera and your intertrochanteric line. And also, this also, uh, is responsible for knee extension and stabilizing your patella. Now onto the last muscle of your quadriceps is going to be your vastus intermedius. And this is actually completely covered by your rectus femoris. So if we hide this, this is going to be our um, vastus intermedius. And it originates anterior and lateral of your femur, same insertion. And then this is responsible for knee extension. Now onto our tensor fasciae latae, that is going to be covering your hip area right here. And this originates in um, your anterior iliac crest in your anterior superior iliac spine, and it inserts into your iliotibial tract. And what that is, is just the connective tissue that connects your iliac crest to your tibia. So that's right here. And what uh, the tensor fasciae latae is for is for steadying your trunk. Now we're going to go to the posterior side of our model. And the next muscle we're going to be looking at is the gluteus maximus, which is this one right here. And it originates in your dorsal ilium, sacrum, and your coccyx right here. And it inserts into your gluteal tuberosity of your femur and your iliotibial tract, which is what we saw before as the connective tissue. And what your gluteus maximum is responsible for is hip extension. And now our gluteus medius, which is slightly covered, it's right here, if we fade the others, we can see that it originates in the upper lateral surface of your ilium and um, inserts into the greater trochanter of your femur. And this ab abducts your hip and medially rotates your femur. Now onto our hamstrings, which is on the posterior side of our model and um, we're going to start with our biceps femoris which is the most lateral so it's going to be here and here 
biceps femoris. And this originates in your ischial tuberosity, linea aspera, and also your distal femur, and it inserts into the head of your fibula and lateral condyle of your tibia. What this is for and what everything in your hamstrings are for is hip extension and knee flexion. Next, we have our semitendinosus, and we're going more medial. So starting laterally is the biceps femoris. Now our semitendinosus right here. The origin is the ischial tuberosity, and it inserts into the medial aspect of our upper tibial shaft, and same action. And lastly, for our hamstrings is our semimembranosus, which is right here. And this also originates in your ischial tuberosity and inserts into the medial condyle of your tibia and the lateral condyle of your femur. Okay, finally, we are going to look at the muscles acting on the human foot and ankle. So fibularis longus, it's going to be pretty lateral because that's where your fibula is. So it's going to be this muscle right here. And this one originates... Um, at the head and your upper fibula. If we hide the others, you can see it better. And it actually goes down pretty far um, and it inserts into your first metatarsal and your medial cuneiform. This is responsible for plantar flexion of your ankle, like planting your foot down, something like that. And um, it also averts your foot. Now onto our tibialis anterior, just like the fibularis longus, you can tell that this one is mostly going to be on your tibia. So it's going to be this muscle here. This is your tibialis anterior. And this originates in the lateral condyle of your proximal tibia and inserts into the first uniform and metatarsal one. So it also goes pretty far down there. Uh, this one is responsible for dorsiflexion of your ankle, which is kind of flexing your foot up. So it's pointing upwards. The last two muscles that we're going to cover are on the posterior side of our model, and that is going to be the gastrocnemius, which is your calf right here. There's two heads, um, and this originates in the medial and lateral condyles of your femur and inserts into the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon, which is this one right here. And this is responsible for plantar flexion of the ankle, like we discussed, it's planting your foot down. Um, and lastly, we have our soleus, which is right behind our uh, gastrocnemius. If we fade the others, we can see that one better. So for the soleus, it originates in the proximal tibia and fibula and has the same insertion as the gastrocnemius, which is the calcaneus through the calcaneal tendon. And it also has the same action, which is plantar flexion of the ankle. I hope you found this review helpful. You can listen to us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram. And thank you so much for watching. Bye, Lucem.